In this lesson, we're going to be adding a water ripple effect on our puddles. As you can see, simply making these puddle areas reflective gets us part of the way there, but all the puddles are flat and there's no variation or movement, so it's not the best material at the moment. First of all, these puddles are still a bit bright for my tastes, so I'm going to go back to the material editor and change that diffuse multiplier down to 0.32, which will make the puddles much darker and easier to see. Then, the next thing, which I think could improve things, is that I want to change the size of the puddles. Now that we have some static meshes to give us some kind of scale, I'm thinking that the puddles look a bit small. So the way we can change that is to go back to the material again and go all the way back to our tiling parameter. Currently, we're tiling with a multiplication value of 4. I'll change that to 2 and see how it looks. And that looks much better to me. Now let's tackle the ripple effect. We're going to achieve this by taking a static normal texture that has the appearance of waves and offsetting the UVs continuously over time. Because the texture will be a tiling texture, there'll be no seams and can be offset over a long period of time. This technique is known as panning. A single texture panning can look quite simple though, so we're going to give the appearance of complexity by stacking two levels of panning on top of each other and have each layer move in a different direction and different speed. So the first thing I'll do is create a new texture sample node and for the texture, I'm going to use one from the starter content which you can search for with water underscore n. Then I'll duplicate this for our second layer. To start our panning effect, we'll need some default texture coordinates. And then to offset them, we'll need an add node. We want to add a value that increases with time in a particular direction and speed. So for the direction and speed, I want a 2D vector and I'll set that value to 0 and 0 0.8 so that it will increase in the V direction only. The node that gives us the increased value over time is unsurprisingly called the time node. I'll simply multiply those two things together and add that to the texture coordinates. Then that goes into our texture sample to use those panning UVs. Now we can preview the normal texture to see what it's going to give us. And as you can see, it is panning in the V direction. I'll copy this whole section and duplicate it for use for the second layer. And I might as well surround this section with a comment and call it pan UVs. And the same for the second one. If we plug the second panning UVs into the second texture sample node unmodified, we're going to get the same result as before but then I can go and change the direction so that it's different from the previous one. And it might be good to not make it go completely in the U direction, so I'll add a bit of V so that it's at a bit of an angle. Now, if I blend those with a LUP and use a value of 0.5 for the blend factor, then we'll get an even mix between the two normal textures. Let's preview that. And they're definitely blending, but they're moving a bit quick at the moment. So I'll go back to the direction and speed control and lower the rate at which this texture pans. And the same for the second one too. And that looks a bit better. Now let's get this whole section. I'm going to plug it into where we had the flat normal constant. But before I do that, I want to add in one extra control, which is going to be a strength control for the intensity of the normal map. I'll create a multiply. And for the multiplication, I want to multiply against a 3D vector. So I'll hit the 3 hotkey and place one down. If I set the red and green components to 0.1, but have the blue component at 1, then that keeps the normal sticking up out of the face the same, but the intensity of the tangential information, which is in the red and green channels, and is what makes the surface appear non-flat, is multiplied down by a factor of 0.1, and the surface will appear less bumpy. So plugging that in and previewing that shows a less intense normal map. So let's get this result and put it into our previously flat puddle and go back to the main viewport. And here we're seeing some interesting looking rippling wavy puddles. 
We can even go back to our material and play with the size of the ripples by changing the tiling directly on the texture coordinate nodes, and give each layer a different tiling amount to add even more variation. Then I'll just increase the intensity of the effect by changing the multiplication factor to 0.2. I'll apply that and see what we get. It's looking better, but I think the ripples are still a bit big and I want them to be more detailed. So I'm going to go back to the tiling and increase it a bit more, but then reduce the strength of the normals by setting the multiplication to 0.05. I'll take a look at that. And if we look close up, we're getting a nice subtle effect. I'll make it a bit more obvious by raising that strength just a bit more to 0.075. And then I'll go and darken that diffuse texture even more by melting down to 0.24. There we go. I'm happy with that. It's a simple effect, but just adds that little bit of interest. In the next lesson, we're going to explore how to add random rotations and scaling to each splat to create an even more interesting and varying look across the surface of the floor.